This is part 11 titled Blessed in this sermon series on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Be enriched as you listen. All right, so we're going to spend time in God's Word. We've been on, on the series of studies, um, on the series of st- studying the subject on our identity in Christ. We've been on it for uh, several weeks. Uh, this month, hopefully, we'll uh, bring this series uh, to a conclusion by the end of this month. Uh, today, so in case you've missed any of these, uh, you can always go to our church website. All the messages are there, the sermon notes are there, so you could uh, take the time to uh, go over uh, the prior messages in this series. So, like I've said many times, this series on our identity in Christ is so important for all of us as believers to really embrace and and to know uh, this is who I am in Christ, my identity in Christ. This is the inheritance that I have in Christ as a believer, uh, a believer in in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is how I have to live my life out of that identity. This is so important. And our desire is that for all of us as believers, that we understand our inheritance, understand our identity, understand our inheritance, and learn how to live out of that. And that's what the Christian life is. It's living out of our life in Christ. That's what it's all about. And if we learn to do that, all of us as believers can live victoriously, uh, can overcome the challenges that we face. And of course, life has its all challenges. Each one of us face different kinds of challenges. But as we learn to live out of our identity and our inheritance in Christ, we will learn to live victoriously. So this, this revelation in the New Testament, like we said, is so key for all of us living victoriously. So today, I want to just focus on the fact that we are blessed in Christ. Last Sunday, we talked about the fact that we are children and heirs of God. And as, in, as the Bible says, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And that means we have an inheritance and we share with Christ in what God has given to him. That's what it means to be a joint heir. You share in the same blessings. What we want to understand is what has God blessed us with and how do we live out of that? And so today, in, 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 this, in this brief time, uh, there, there are a lot of things that, uh, that you will find in Scripture that God has blessed us with. Uh, we've tried to enumerate them, list them uh, for us, uh, and you'll find a lot of that in the sermon notes, and eventually this will come out as a book, uh, so you can study the entire uh, series, uh, study the entire message. Uh, but I'm going to pick, I've picked out a few of these. Uh, it's not everything that, that we can itemize, but I just picked out a few of these. But I really want us to understand this is what God has given to us. So let's begin with Colossians, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Ephesians 1, 11 and 12. I want us to understand that God has given to us an inheritance. So let's read these verses out loud, please. It's good to read scripture. So let's go. Ephesians 1, 11 and 12 will come up on the screen. Let's go. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So it says, in him. That's what we've been tracing throughout the New Testament, this phrase, in Christ. What has happened to us in Christ? In him, what has happened? The Bible says we have, past tense, we have obtained an inheritance. It says in Christ, God has given you an inheritance. So it's yours. And the reason he gave it to us, it says, so that we could be to the praise of his glory. That means God is going to be glorified as you and I discover and walk in our inheritance. Amen? So there's no point in you and me saying, look, I have an inheritance, but I don't know what it is. If you don't know the inheritance, it's pointless. 
And there's no point in us saying, I know I have an inheritance, but I don't know what a, how to uh, acquire it, how to make use of it. There's no point. But when you and I understand, this is what God has given to me. In Him, God has given to me an inheritance. And if I walk in my inheritance, it's only going to be to the praise of His glory. It's only going to glorify Him. So I must make every effort to discover my inheritance in Christ and then walk in it here on earth. Now, we do understand that part of this inheritance is something we will enjoy here in this life. And of course, there's a part of the inheritance in the life hereafter. But at least and let's enjoy the inheritance that God wants us to walk in here and now. Amen? And so that's what we want to do. Now, the other thing I want us to understand is that God has qualified you to enjoy the inheritance. Meaning, there's nothing more you, need, you and I need to do to earn that, to try to get it. I mean, in, in the sense that God has already granted it to you. And there's nothing required, nothing more required from you and me to qualify for that inheritance. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Let's read that out together, please. Let's go. Giving thanks... To the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So God has qualified you. So put your right hand up and say this with me. God has qualified me to partake, to enjoy my share of the inheritance that he has for his people. Amen. God has already qualified you. You are qualified. That means you are fit to enjoy your share of the inheritance. You know, many of us think of ourselves as unworthy, unfit, unqualified. Sometimes we disqualify ourselves. We say, you know, God will bless that person. That person is really spiritual. That other person there is very prayerful. So that person can enjoy the inheritance. God will bless him or bless her. But me, I don't think so. But hey, the Bible says, giving thanks to him, to God. Because he has qualified us to partake of the inheritance of the saints in the light. You are qualified. I wish I can get it into you. As I keep repeating sometimes, I keep repeating it because I really want to make sure you get it. You are qualified. Don't ever think of yourself as a person who is disqualified, unfit, unworthy to walk in the blessings of God. The Bible, the written scriptures state that you have been qualified to partake of the inheritance that he has for his people. Every and every, every blessing, you've been qualified to partake. So don't ever think, that person deserves it, but I don't. Don't think like that of yourself. Think in line with the Word of God. The Word of God says you have been qualified to partake of this inheritance. Now, of course, as a, th there is something that we need to do. You see, we, need, we, we mentioned this last Sunday. Uh, when you think about this in the natural, when, in the natural, when somebody... You know, typically a parent leaves an inheritance for their children. They, they leave it simply because they are their children. Son and daughter, or sons and daughters. They are my children, I'm leaving this for them. And last Sunday we said, you are a son and a daughter of God. And God has qualified you just by the fact that you are his son and daughter. You are qualified to partake of this inheritance. But at the same time, if you have to do something to take it, to make it yours and walk in it, you need to know what your inheritance is and how to walk in it. If you don't know that an inheritance has been left for you, and you've probably read some of these stories in the newspapers where, you know, a person uh, may have been living in a, in, a, in a really downtrodden shack in a very uh, deplorable state, when actually they later on discover that a huge inheritance was left for them against their name. But until they discovered that, they were living in, a very, in a very difficult conditions. And it was not necessary for them to be that way. 
because there was a huge inheritance left for them. And so we must discover what is that inheritance God has given to us and what does he want me to do to enjoy it? And that's why Acts 20, verse 32, let's read that. Acts 20, verse 32, the apostle Paul is speaking to the leaders at Ephesus, and he says this. Let's read it together, please. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So as the Apostle Paul saying, Brethren, I'm commending you to God and to his word. The word is able to build you up and give you this inheritance. That means through the word of God, by grow, by, through the word you're going to discover and through the word you're going to build yourself up, become strong, to walk, to walk in this inheritance that God has kept for those who love him, those who are his people. That's why the Word of God is so important. Amen? So we spend time in the Word to understand this is what God has said in His Word. This is what He wants me to do. This is how I walk in my inheritance. And, and so then you and I, as we understand the Word of God, we begin to learn and walk in our inheritance. So I just want to enumerate a few things uh, that uh, this morning, there are several others that are listed in the sermon notes, which are on the website. You can download it. And together in this book, uh, uh, the, Our Identity in Christ, you'll find all of this uh, listed. Uh, let's go now. Uh, the first one I want to bring our attention to is the fact that God said we will reign in life. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Romans 5, 17. Is everyone with me together? Yes? Romans 5, 17. Let's read it out, please. Let's go together. Read it together. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now, Romans chapter 5. Uh, the book of Romans is so amazing. It's a beautiful book. In Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul brings out the truth of identification. And several Sundays back, we studied this truth on identification. The essence of that truth is simply this. One man, what happened to one man affects the many. One man, Adam, sinned. And Adam, through his sin, brought the entire human race, brought us into subjection to sin, Satan, and death. That means everything between sin and death we were brought under, which includes sickness, disease, poverty, everything else. None of that was designed by God. It came in because of sin, ultimately resulting in death. So through, by one man's sin, Adam's sin, the entire human race was brought in subjection to sin, Satan, and death. But, the first, but Adam was just the first man. He was not the real man. Romans 5 says he was a type of the real man. The real man is the second man, the last Adam, that is Jesus Christ. And through the second man, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, the Bible says, God gave to us the free gift of salvation, abundance of grace, and the gift of righteousness. So put your right hand up and say this with me. Through Jesus, I've received God's free gift of eternal life, of abundant grace, and the gift of righteousness. Let's say it one more time so make sure you believe it. Through the Lord Jesus, I have received God's free gift of eternal life, of abundant grace, and the gift of righteousness. Now, what did that do to you? The Bible says here in verse 17, And those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what will happen to them? They will reign in life. Adam made us slaves, put us in subjection. Jesus 
by causing God's abundant grace and the gift of righteousness to come on us, says, because of that, you are going to reign when? When you get to heaven? No. Reign where? In life. In this life. You're going to reign. What does it mean? It means everything Adam put us in subjection to, Christ gives us mastery and dominion over. Did you get it? Everything Adam put us in subjection to, Jesus puts us over. That's redemption. That's why he came. He came to reverse the fall. So you are going to reign in life through Jesus Christ. Amen? You're not happy. You don't seem convinced. <laughs> but how do we walk in truth? First you have to believe it. Then you can walk in it. So believe what the Bible says. The Bible says, those who have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you will reign in life. That means everything Adam put us under, you have dominion and mastery over. You have mastery and dominion over sin, over Satan, over death. Now we know we will die physically. I'm not saying we won't die, but we know Christ is going to give us eternal life. Uh, you're going to live forever. So don't worry about that. But here in life, everything between sin and death, you have dominion and mastery over. So when you and I face life, how do we face it? We face it saying, I'm going to reign over this. We're going to face things in this world that are brought about by sin and Satan and, 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 and sickness and disease and all these things will come. We are in this world. But how do you face it? You say, I am a person who has received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And so I'm going to reign over it. I'm going to exercise dominion and mastery over this. That's what the Bible says. So you and I should think like that. You and I should face life like that as somebody who has mastery and dominion over the things that we face on this earth, in this earth. Amen. Say this with me. I reign in life through Jesus Christ. I have mastery over sin, over sickness, over Satan, over situations through Christ. That's how we face life. Because you have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And that has put you over over everything that Adam subjected you and me to. That's redemption. That's why Christ came. So let's say, in your workplace, you're finding things happen, people are against you, they're, they're doing things against you. Now, of course, you do what you have to do in the natural. That is, you, know, you address the matter and you do what is. We are living in a natural world, you gotta do those things, take care of it. But you also need to deal with it in the spirit. So in your prayer closet at home, don't go and do this in front of your boss. No. You and I have better sense than that. In your prayer closet at home, you say, I take authority over every spirit, over every demonic power that's behind this confusion, that's behind this thing that's coming up against me. In the name of Jesus, I bind those works. And I command peace in that situation. I command good understanding because the Bible says that God surrounds me with favor as with a shield. Because the Bible says that if I walk before God, he will give me, uh, this is Proverbs 3, verse 3, he will, he, will, he will give me honor before man. And there are several scriptures that you can use. So I speak grace, I speak peace, I speak good understanding in that situation. Proverbs 16, verse 7 says, If a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's the Bible. So you have to reign in life. You've got to take the word and force it in that situation. Are you listening? You do what you have to do in the natural. 
because we are living in a natural world, but you're also going to dominate in the spiritual. Because you reign in life, this life. Because you have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Don't let that go in vain. Jesus paid a great price for God's grace to be poured out abundantly on you and me so that you and I can reign in this life over sin, everything that's between sin and death, everything. Satan does all kinds of things, but you dominate. You have mastery over. So I'm taking authority over that. Amen? We can close the service and go home right here. Let's go to the next one. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Let's read this out together. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Let's read it out together, please. Let's go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, those words again, in Christ, that's the series. Our identity in Christ. In Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Paul is saying, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What has he done? He has, past tense, he has blessed us, us, all of us, with ten blessings. No. With every Every spiritual blessing. That means every blessing that comes from God. Because God is spirit. Every blessing that comes from God is, this, is included. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. In heavenly places, that means in the spiritual realm. Or you could use the unseen realm. In the heavenly places. That means in the heavenly realms, this is your inheritance. God has blessed you. He's granted it to you. So you and I are living two lives. We are in the natural, but we're also in the spiritual. We have a duality of existence. We talked about it in a series earlier. You're in the natural. You have your identity. You're born into a certain family. You have a certain you know, uh, inheritance, everything in the natural. You have an identity in the natural. But in the spiritual, you're a child of God. And as a child of God, God is saying, I have already blessed you with every blessing that I have, and I've given it to you. Wow. You're very rich in the Spirit, in Christ. But why do you think God did that? So that while you and I live our life here on earth, we can draw out of that spiritual inheritance or that spiritual blessing and walk in it. Are you understanding? God didn't bless you and me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places so that, just, just so that, you know, he makes us feel good. And that here on earth we struggle through life. That's not his intent. His intent is, I've given everything to you in the Spirit. Every blessing that comes from God is already yours. But you and I are here on earth. By faith, bring it out of the spiritual and walk in it in the natural. Amen? In Luke, the 13th chapter, and I'm digressing a little bit. Just bear with me. In Luke, the, the, the 13th chapter, Jesus goes into the synagogue one day. He sees a woman who's bent over, and she's been in that condition for 18 years. Now, what caused it, we don't know. Whether she had an injury, whether whatever it is, but she'd been bent over in a back problem for 18 years. And then how does Jesus respond? He says, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, that means she's got a spiritual inheritance, 
What's her spiritual inheritance? She's a daughter of Abraham. In the natural, she has a natural lineage, but that natural lineage has entitled her to a spiritual inheritance. She's a daughter of Abraham. Ought not this woman, whom Satan had bound these 18 years, he didn't say God bound, Satan bound. Sickness and disease is not from God. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer. But Satan had bound her. This disease, this problem in her body is because Satan caused it. Satan has bound her. Ought not this woman whom, whom Satan has bound these 18 years be loosed from this bond? In other words, she has a spiritual inheritance. It's time for her to receive it here on earth, to walk in it. And that's what I want to impress on our hearts. That God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And he's not against you and me saying, Father, I receive it here and now. All that God is, he's made available to you and me. When he said, I'm blessing you with every spiritual blessing. So you and I are not trying to convince God to bless us. He's already blessed you. Say this with me. Put your right hand up. Say this with me. I have been, I have been blessed. But every blessing that comes from God in Jesus Christ. It is true. It's the word of God. So in every situation, even in situations that are harsh, that are difficult, maybe, you know, it's a financial situation. You're facing a financial problem. Maybe, you, you, you know, you just got laid off work. You lost your job. Maybe it's a sickness Maybe it's people speaking against you. Whatever it is, in every situation, you are blessed. Start off that way. So, but, but situations are bad. It's okay. Everything in the natural is subject to the spiritual. Everything in the natural can change. Amen? And in the spiritual, you are blessed. That has not changed. The Bible still says, God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. You may have lost a job. It's a reality. You've, there's a financial problem. There's a sickness. There is a difficult situation. Yes, I'm not denying it. But you say, I am blessed. God has blessed me. And I can overcome the situation by walking in my spiritual inheritance. So you have an attitude. I mentioned this last Sunday. You have an attitude of blessedness. A smile is your style. Sounds cool. <laughs> you still smile. Why? Because you're blessed. You're blessed with heaven's best. But you say, hey, the situation doesn't look good. It's okay. My father will change it for me. And his word says, I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. And when you know that in that blessing, all that Jehovah God is, he has made himself available to you. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer. So healing is, your, is in that blessing. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. So provision for your life is in that blessing. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who gives us victory. So victory for your life is in that blessing. He is Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is with you. So God's presence with you is in that blessing. Everything God is, is there. And he says, I've already given it to you in Christ. Amen? Now, by faith, by faith, we take it. So we need to learn, learn how to use our faith in God, how to exercise faith in God. Because God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing, and faith is what takes that from the spiritual and brings it into the natural. And God has given to each one of us the measure of faith. He says, you can do it. Amen? And that's why even in difficult situations, even in troublesome situations, you still stand. You start with this, with this premise or with this truth. God has blessed me. Amen? Because you indeed have been blessed by God 
with every spiritual blessing in Christ in the heavenly places. Next one. Are you all with me so far? Next one. Always triumphant in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Let's read it together, please. Now, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Let's read it one more time. Now, thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ and diffuses through us the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So Paul is saying, give thanks to God. Why? Because he always, always means in every situation, in every circumstance, every day of the week, he always, and every moment of every day, he always, what does he do? He causes us. To cause means to make to happen. It's not dependent on you. It's dependent on him. He is causing it. He is making it happen. He always causes us to what? To triumph. In Christ. In Christ. That's what we've been studying about. So in Christ... God will always cause you to triumph. Why? So that through you, the beautiful aroma of Christ can be made known in every place. That means that includes your workplace. Amen? Amen? See, God doesn't cause us to triumph only in church. He said every place. It includes you in your college, Ruthie. In your classroom. Wherever you are, he's going to cause you to triumph. So every situation in life, in your home, in your family, in your marriage, in your dealing with your children, in, in dealing with your colleagues in the workplace, in dealing with your colleagues in your classroom, in dealing with your lecturers, or every place, the Bible says, God causes you to triumph. So that through you, the fragrance of your knowledge of the Lord can be made manifest. Amen? So the same thing. Just as you and I have an attitude of blessedness, we have an attitude of being more than conquerors. We have an attitude. It's a good attitude. That in every situation, no matter what you face, you say, God, I thank you. You're going to bring me out the winner. At the moment, I may, I may be way, way, way down at the bottom. Crushed by my circumstances. Crushed by my situations. But the Bible says, God always causes you to triumph. And if God is going to cause it, who can stop it? So how is he going to cause it? Don't worry, relax. Leave that to God. But he's going to cause it. All he wants you and me is to believe. Believe. That he's causing you to triumph, to overcome that situation. So as you're facing it, I'm not saying live in denial. No, face it. I know it may be hard. Some battles are hard. I know there may be those moments when you feel disappointed, depressed, or discouraged. You know, we are human beings. We face, we feel all that. Nothing wrong. But in those moments, you and I have to encourage ourselves with the Word of God. You open your Bible. Read the Word of God. God, I thank you 
giving thanks, right? So God, I thank you that in this situation, even though I feel like this, in this situation, you cause me to triumph. And that through my life, the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus Christ will be made known. Dare to say that. You can't say it because it's the word of God and his word is truth. Amen? So you begin to do that. That's faith in God. And that's what God is looking for, for you and me to have that faith in Him. And God will move over a million people just to get to you because you are a person of faith. You have faith in His Word. And faith in God is what attracts God. It's what draws God in to work in our lives. So say, God, in this situation, I know it looks bad. I know it's really difficult. But your Word says... That you always cause me to triumph. And so God, I'm expecting to come out triumphant. I don't know how, I don't know, I can't figure out the ways or the solutions, but that's not my part, that's your part, because you are the one who's causing me to triumph. My part is to trust you. That you will do it. And it says, in every place, so doesn't matter which situation, what kind of situation. God will bring you out the winner. The devil is not going to win. Those who want to suppress the truth are not going to win. You are a child of God, and you are an overcomer. God is causing you to win. Amen? Just a few more, I think, and I close. We are complete in Him with His fullness. I think just two more. Let's read these verses together. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Let's go. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. Let's read it one more time. Colossians 1, 19. Let's go. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. Now, in the next chapter, the Paul, Apostle Paul is writing about you and me, and he says this in verse chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Let's read that together, please. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Now, just think through what Paul is saying. Verse 19 of Colossians 1, he says, you know, God the Father, he says, in Christ is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This word fullness that the Apostle Paul write, uses in his writings, and you, read it, you see it a lot in Ephesians, and then again now in Colossians, it's, it's talking about all who God is, the very nature of God, that word fullness. You can study it. So in verse 19 of Colossians 1, he says, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So every person of the Trinity represents the Godhead completely. So God the Father, God the Son of the Eternal Word, and God the Spirit. God the Father is not one-third God. Did you know that? He is God. God the Son, or God the Eternal Word, is not one-third God. He's fully God. And God the Holy Spirit is not one-third God. He's fully God. Every person of the Godhead represents the Godhead fully. And that's why Colossians 1 verse 19 says, In Him, that's in Christ, in the Eternal Word, God the Son, in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead. All of God is in the Eternal Word, God the Son. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, it's, again, he repeats it. For in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And verse 10, and you are complete in him. What does that mean? You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So he's saying, in him, 
There's a fullness of the Godhead. You and I are in Him, in Christ. That's what we've been studying. And by virtue of you and I being in Him, in Christ, we become complete. With what? With what's in Him? What's in Him? The fullness of the Godhead. Now, how do you visualize this? It's nice to visualize Scripture. It's not wrong to use your imagination. God designed it. Amen? So, amen? So use your imagination. You visualize. God designed that. It's a beautiful part of our us that we can visualize. We can imagine. So imagine something like this, right? Imagine a big, uh, a big uh, container of water. Big container. I wish we had a graphic on this, but anyway. Big container of water. Imagine it's full of water. A water jug or something. And imagine you and I are a small glass, small glass, and it's empty. Now you put the small glass into the big container of water. What happens? It gets filled with what's in the container, in the big uh, jar. And that's what he's saying. So we are lacking. We are incomplete. But the moment we go into him, we are made complete. But what are we made complete with? We are made complete with what's in him. The fullness of God. That means what's in God is now being made available, is now is what completes you and me. His righteousness is our righteousness. His holiness is our holiness. You with me? We've studied all this before. We are righteous in Him. We are complete in Him. We are sanctified in Him. So what's in Him completes me. What's in Him completes you. And out of that fullness, we live. His life, the God kind of life, the Zoe life of God, is what is in you. What is eternal life? It's God's life in you. Amen? I mean, God's life is in you, John chapter 1 says. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot overpower it. In Him was life. The life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot overpower it. Meaning, his life in you floods you with light, and everything of darkness has to leave. Amen? What's in him completes you. Think about it. Uh, and just dwell on it. It, it. It's an amazing thing to journey deeper into this revelation that what's in him completes me. And because of that, you and I also walk in dominion over every principality and power. So when you and I face demons, we're not afraid. Oh, let me call pastor. What about you? Because you are complete with the same fullness that I'm completed with. There's no difference. Just that I have a title called pastor and you don't. That, but that doesn't matter. You can call yourself a pastor too. <laughs> it's only a title. It means nothing. It's a responsibility, of course. But other than that, you and I are the same in Christ. Because we're all complete in Him. So you are as much uh, in dominion over demons and works of darkness as much as I am. The same authority and the same dominion is, is vested in you as is vested in me. Because all of us find our completeness in Christ. And his authority is what's flowing in you. His, the authority that comes from him is what makes you complete. To stand there, face those demons. Take authority over the situations. Because you are complete in Christ. His fullness is what completes you and me. What's in him 
is flowing in you. Walk in it. Amen? Last one. And, oh, actually the last two, but we'll go through this quickly. Yes to all his promises. Second Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. Let's read that. Second Corinthians 1, verse 19 and 20. For the Son of God, let's read it together quick. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So I just want to bear this on our hearts today. All the promises of God in him are yes. Not yes and no. Not yes, maybe, and no. Not yes, maybe, no, and I don't know. No, it's only yes. Because some theologians add all these other things. Please read the Bible. For all the promises of God in Christ are yes. That means for you as a person, as a believer in Christ, all the promises of God are yes. God is not telling you, my child, to that child, yes, but to you, I have to say, I don't know. He's not dealing like that with you. You are as much in Christ as any other believer. And in him, for all of us, all the promises of God are a yes. That means you have access and you have the privilege of every promise of God in Christ. It's a yes to you. As much as it is a yes to any other child of God. And we all have the promise of the resurrection. First Thessalonians 4.16. Let's read it. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. With the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So this is again. So what, what I've done is I've just itemized a few of these inheritance blessings, right? That's a lot more. But I just wanted to put this in to make it complete, that we believe in the resurrection from the dead, and that's a blessing for every one of us who die in Christ, that one day these bodies, these mo this mortal body will put on immortality. Amen? And that our bodies will be changed. And we'll have glorified bodies, the same kind of bodies that Jesus had when he, raised, he was raised from the dead. And this is a part of our inheritance, which we will enjoy in time to come. But it's part of what God has given to us. And it's a blessed hope to know that, that while we journey through life, and yes, we go through all these things, and this outer man is decaying, and this outer man will one day perish, but we have this beautiful assurance that the dead in Christ will rise. So what must we do? In closing, acknowledge the good things that you have in Christ. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. There's only one chapter. Let's read this verse. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Acknowledge the good things that are in you because you are in Christ Jesus. And that's how we have true fellowship. He says that the sharing of your faith may become effective. Many, of, many times our fellowships are so meaningless. Sometimes very depressing. You were happy before you went to the fellowship. After the fellowship, very depressed. Why? Because we didn't do what the Bible said. The Bible said that the sharing of your faith may become effective. How? By the acknowledging of the good things that are in you in Christ. That means instead of saying, oh, you so poor, sad thing. Say, hey, you are blessed. Oh, you're going through such a hard time. No. Say, God will cause you to triumph in Christ. What happens? The fellowship of our faith becomes effective. It's not about, not that I don't have sympathy for you. Uh, I do sympathize with you, but sympathy doesn't help you. Faith does. So what must I do? I must acknowledge the good things 
that are in you because you are in Christ. Have a listen. Listen to your problems or your struggles. And then I need to affirm that there is something in you that can cause you to triumph. There is something in you that can cause you to overcome. There is something in you that God has entrusted you. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. I need to awaken you to the spiritual truth. And that's how our fellowship is going to be made effective. Acknowledge the good things that are in you. In Christ. Amen. Amen. And that's how we build each other up. And do this for your own self. Acknowledge the good things. You go before God and say, Father, I thank you that this is what your word says. Father, I know I'm facing a difficult situation, but your word says that you always cause me to triumph, God. And I'm expecting to come out a winner in this situation. Father, I know I'm facing sickness or disease, but Father, your word says, by the stripes of Jesus, I've been healed. I'm expecting to come out healed from this situation, from this illness. Father, I know your word says, I know what I'm facing, but this is what your word says. You have blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, in Christ. And by faith, I want to bring it out. Amen? So you are blessed. God has blessed you and me with an inheritance in Christ, and we must learn to walk in that inheritance, enjoy that inheritance, so that it will be to the praise of his glory. God will be glorified. God will be praised as we walk in the inheritance he's given to us. Amen? Worship team, please come. We're going to take a few moments to worship God together. Our pastoral team will also be here, uh, uh, some of us, uh, some of them are online. Um, and we're going to just minister to you as the Holy Spirit leads us. And, uh, you know, like we just heard as the worship team prepares to come, we, like we just heard from Luke, the 13th chapter, this woman was in the synagogue. She was going in and out every Sabbath day. She was in this problem. But when Jesus came, he said, she's got a blessing to her name. She is the daughter of Abraham. And she should be loosed from this infirmity that Satan has bound. She should be loosed because she's a daughter of Abraham. You are a child of God. Every person here, you've received Jesus Christ into your life. Pastor Jay Kumar invited us to do that earlier today. You, you have received Jesus Christ into your life. You are a child of God. And God is your Jehovah Rapha. He's your healer. And we don't talk about God as being Jehovah Rapha just so that you can have a name plaque or some card or some nice thing that you hang on the wall. Jehovah Rapha. What good does it do? We believe in Jehovah Rapha because our body is for him and he is for our body. Amen. If our faith in Jehovah Rapha doesn't result in healing in our bodies, then it's useless. Why even believe? But if he is Jehovah Rapha and we have faith in Jehovah Rapha, then Jehovah Rapha has to be the Lord our healer. Healing has to be in our bodies. And we can believe God and say, God, I want you to heal me. I want you to touch me. I want you to heal me. Now, we are not against doctors. We're not against hospitals. Thank God. We do believe God has given us a mind and an understanding. And, and we take the help of uh, the knowledge that we have through science and medicine and all of that. That's good. And that's one of the ways God administers healing. But God also administers healing by the power of his Holy Spirit. And he has taught us in his word that when we come together, we should expect. When we gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is there. So we should expect him to heal us while we are in, a, in an environment like this, while we are together as the people of God. And anywhere that we have faith, we can expect God to heal. So today, as we pray, we're going to take a few moments to pray. And we'll be minister as the Lord leads. Uh, I want you to be expectant that God is here 
And God is a supernatural God. He's a miracle working God. Uh, he's a God who hears and answers prayer. He's a God who can touch you right where you are this moment. Those of you watching online, wherever you are, God can touch you. He can heal. He can deliver. He can intervene in your life situations. He can provide for you. Everything that we read today from the scriptures is not just to fill in a sermon, but it's for God to make good in your life. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. Amen? So let's rise to our feet, please. We're going to pray right now before we take a moment of worship. I also call our uh, Pastor Jacob, our Pastor Nancy, please come. Uh, we're just going to pray a simple prayer for healing. All right. And just like what Jesus did for this woman in that synagogue that day, believe he will do for you and me. He's here. We have gathered in his name. We haven't come to some denomination. We haven't come to some church organization. We've come because of Jesus. And he is here. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Do you believe it? I just I'll touch your neighbor and say, hey, Jesus is here. <laughs> it's not just a ritual that we've come to do. We've come to meet with Jesus. And he's come to meet with you. So we want to pray. We want Jesus to be real. We want Jesus to be our healer, our deliverer, our miracle worker. And this morning, this moment, you've, 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 you've heard the word. But now God wants to make the word good in your life and mine. So say, Lord, you've blessed me with every spiritual blessing. And this is the blessing I need today. Some of you maybe here, and I don't want to embarrass you, but you don't have money. I know it's an embarrassing situation. It's a difficult situation. But is God interested? Does he care about your situation? Of course he does. Is he a miracle-working God? Of course he's a miracle-working God. Can he provide money for you? Of course he can. Is it wrong to ask him to do that? It's not wrong. How he does it, we don't know. But we can pray. He may do it through some other friend or somebody else, or he may just do it through some unusual way, a miracle. Doesn't matter how he provides. But don't be ashamed to ask God, God, I'm in a situation where I have no money. I have bills to pay. I have a family to care for. I have whatever my situation is. God, provide for me, please. Pray. Ask him. He will do it. How he does it, leave it to him. But he's your father. Some of us need healing in our bodies. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord, our healer. Is it wrong to ask him for healing? No. Stand here as you're standing here. Ask him. Whatever it is, it may be something small, like a sinus headache that keeps on happening. Or it may be something serious, big, terminal. He's still the healer. He's still the healer. Ask him. Those of you watching at home, wherever you are, Ask him. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. He's blessed us. Ask and say, Lord, by faith, I'm receiving now. I'm receiving now. I want to pray. I'm going to pray right now. And I'm going to pray specifically. You know, we heard that story about the woman with a back problem. So if you're here with a back problem or even with a shoulder problem, specifically right here on your on your on your What's this? This is your right shoulder, the back. We're going to pray, and I want you to just check. And if a healing takes place right now, then I want you to come up and testify. There's nothing wrong in talking about the good things of God. Amen? So just come up here. If a healing takes place right now, just come up and say, my back was healed. I had this and this problem, or my shoulder was healed. Just come up here. Or it could be some other miracle, some, some other healing that takes place. Just come on up and share your testimony. There are mics here. Our ushers will help you. Just say what the Lord has done. Are we ready? 
Yes? Let's pray. Are we ready to pray? Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. So if you have a song, go ahead. We'll sing this song and, and, and then we're going to pray. But just prayers are hard to say, to receive.
we're just going to pray and then our pastors will also join us and just minister you know this is a time where we just let the holy spirit minister through what the bible calls the gifts of the holy spirit there are gifts of healings working to miracles the gift of faith prophecy tongues interpretation all that so we're just leaving this time open for the holy spirit to minister by his gifts i want you to be expectant that we have come to encounter jesus and in this place jesus is real he's the healer he's a miracle worker he's the deliverer he's the one who cares for his people he's the one who meets his needs father right now we just pray for those who are in financial need god jesus you're the miracle worker and we pray that you will work a miracle in their life situation we leave it to you god how you're going to provide but we pray today we agree with them we pray god that you will provide in their lives supernaturally in the name of the lord jesus christ we speak to that need that financial need in their lives we speak to that need we declare the need met we speak god's provision to it in the name of jesus father we pray that they will see you provide for them however you choose to do it they will see the provision of god come in and they will know that god in heaven has done it god has done it because god cares for his own people he is the good shepherd and we are the sheep of his pasture we thank you father god let's speak healing now let's just believe god for healing if there's a problem in your body if you can lay the hand lay your hand on that part of your body you want jesus to heal we're going to pray we're just going to speak simple words of healing it's not about me it's about jesus and if the healing takes place right here right now come forward and testify otherwise you know sometimes the healing takes place over time as a process and that's okay that's wonderful as well Jesus you said lay hands on the sick in my name and they will be healed You said whatever you ask in my name I will do it And in the name of Jesus I command healing to those standing here those watching online Whatever their need is let there be healing I take authority over every spirit of infirmity every foul spirit causing that affliction that disease I come against you in the name of Jesus and I command you to leave I command healing in the name of Jesus Christ and God work miracles that bones be healed bones that were dislocated broken because of injury and not set properly let them be healed now and let backs be healed just as we heard in your word and be complete healing whatever is the cause that they be healing by your power now and every other condition that people might be believing for to be healed let them be healed now in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ because jesus is our healer we thank you oh god we thank you lord jesus thank you god now i want you to take a moment just to check your body it's okay to do that just check your body and if 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 there's a healing that's taking place right here right now our pastors are going to minister to us again but there's a healing that's taking place right here right now just raise your hand wave it or so we could take your testimony or just come right up here and give your testimony something's happened to you right here right now maybe your back is better your shoulder is better just come on up come come just come on up and just share what happened and you can tell something happened to me right here right now okay anybody else if something happened to you or I just will be here to help you just come on up and uh, just share what happened We believe in healing. We believe God heals instantly. There may be it may be a process. It's okay as long as people get healed. But I just like to celebrate what Jesus has done. Just go ahead. Take a moment. Just say what happened. Uh, so three weeks back, I injured my 
Marshall and Jim and uh, basically I pulled a muscle and basically I I would I'm not able to move my neck freely. okay you weren't able to move your neck yeah, freely and every night I had a you know uh, pain, pain in my left shoulder how is it now uh, it's 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 free now I can move my shoulder my neck without feeling of pain ah. ah. thank you thanks for coming and sharing wonderful praise god so 3 weeks back there was an injury couldn't move his head is able to do it right uh, and right now thank god for that anybody else anybody just come up to share your testimony we're just celebrating jesus we won't embarrass you to celebrate jesus anybody else okay now maybe you go home and you find yourself well remember to send a testimony send an email to testimony@apcwo.org we'll share that with people just celebrate the pastor is going to minister we just just be open just be open the lord will speak to you through one of them through words of knowledge through prophecy to anything else that God wants to minister come 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 let's go go ahead. just be open let's continue just wait take a few more minutes please okay um, i just want to declare over every one of us that we are overcomers um and knowing this um uh, you know is uh, that's that's so important for us um and yet you know some of us are in very very challenging and difficult situations um and uh, it might also feel like you know you're kind of uh, being pressured from every side uh and i just feel like um uh, i keep getting these words uh, praise is a weapon praise is a weapon okay and i i want to speak that over those who are in those a uh, difficult situations um and uh, this is what god's word tells us from psalm 8 in verse 2 uh, it says out of the mouth of babes and infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger so god's word says that even as we uh, declare his praises um, even as his praises are on our lips god is going to silence the enemy and the avenger uh, so i just i just want to pray for for um, those of us you know who resonate with this word heavenly father we thank you god we thank you that lord praise is a weapon father even as we raise you up even as we build your throne oh god uh, in our hearts father god by by lifting up your name father we thank you that every enemy is silenced in the name of jesus i take authority over every uh, accusing spirit i take authority over every condemning spirit uh, i come against the works of the evil one in the name of jesus and i cast it out of the situations of people right now and father we declare freedom god we declare freedom in jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. amen. god bless um, i just have a word for uh, those who have been praying and waiting for breakthrough and um, and and this is the instruction which is um, you know prepare your field prepare for rain um you know we've been waiting for breakthrough we've been waiting for something wonderful to happen praying believing um i believe the lord would tell us uh, or instruct us prepare the field and prepare for rain you know uh, in the natural in the spiritual and uh, however it would apply in your situation you know uh, the lord may the lord give understanding but prepare the field maybe spiritually you know to go deeper uh, to confess the word to declare the word um, just like how paul um, instructed timothy you know by these prophecies that you may wage the good warfare so it's like um, it it sometimes it's like warfare but we we take those prophecies we take the word of god and we you know we go uh, and we declare so uh, prepare your field prepare for rain you know let's pray father we uh we just want to thank you god uh, i just pray for divine strategies and uh yes lord i just pray for divine encounters god i pray for lord even simple instructions god which will which will bring great breakthroughs god which will open the greatest of doors god which have remained shut so um lord i just pray that um, you would anoint us afresh today for those of us who've been um lord praying and waiting for those breakthroughs god lord even as we prepare the field even as we prepare for rain oh god lord we we just invite 
your presence. We invite the rain of heaven that brings freshness, that changes the very, very atmosphere, that changes the very environment, God. Yes, Lord, have your way. Pour out your spirit. Let's just you know, open our hands and just receive from him this morning and say, Lord, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, oh God. Yes, every dryness, every, you know, all the uh, tiredness of waiting for that breakthrough, let it be taken away right now. Uh, a renewed strength, a renewed fervor, uh, a renewed passion for the Lord. Uh, and a joy in the spirit, you know, even as you leap up and spring up and say, oh, I will lay hold of this because the Lord has laid hold of me for this very thing. So I will lay hold of it. And joyful, I will press on. I will continue in faith. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a, a, a second thing is, um, you know, um, for some of us, maybe you know, we've been uh, waiting uh, to make a decision, you know, to to go deeper, maybe, uh, or um, to to be committed. Um, again, I don't know the specifics of this, but it's like you know those zebra crossings on the road. You know, there are these opportunities that God gives that, uh, and He's saying, you know, crossover. You know, cross over that. Um, here's that opportunity. Here's that zebra crossing. But you need to go cross over and maybe uh, go all in and say, Lord, I- I'm all in, uh, uh, and be committed to you know um, uh, to Him, committed to something. I don't know, but uh, but God is placing those moments and opening up and say, Here's your zebra crossing. Now, now you you know take that opportunity, walk through. Okay, Amen. 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 Pastor. Okay. Um, I just feel, uh, I, I just sense like most specifically we've prayed for healing and also, uh, you know, uh, one of us shared how God has touched the shoulder and healed. Uh, but, you know, I, I sense um, a couple of specific things. Um, one is a headache, okay, and headache, uh, the, the sort of headache is that it kind of increases. You, you sense it going up. Um, uh, so, you know, that kind of headache, I, I just sense that God is healing people who are struggling uh, with, with those headaches right now. Uh, and also uh, people who are f- finding it difficult to, to um, turn your neck to the right, to the right. Anyone who's struggling to turn your head, neck to the right, um, uh, I just sense that God is touching you and healing you. I receive that in the name of Jesus. And also uh, people who have uh, strained your, your leg, more specifically your right leg, uh, because of uh, activity, because of activity. And it's strained, you know, you have pain and aches, uh, all of that. I just uh, sense that God is touching and healing uh, the leg, the right leg. And I just want to pray uh, over, uh, pray healing uh, over these people in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, that you are Jehovah Rapha. Father, we thank you for the power of the cross. Father, even right now, we we declare it, we release it, oh God, over, over, over the bodies of people in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for uh, recovery. We thank you for, for strength. Father, we, we thank you for wholeness. And Lord, we, we honor you, Lord, for what you are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Pastor, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. I saw this word resolution, and I think it's specifically like what Pastor Jakes was saying about breakthrough, and I think it's specifically for families. Yeah. I got my confirmation from that lovely couple who was holding hands. So can you do that? Can husband and wife just hold your hands? I know that's allowed, even though we have social distancing now. Families of... uh, uh, mother and son families we just hold hands i think god is trying to bring a resolution and like we learned that we have triumphs so even though we have issues at home unresolved god wants to resolve he wants to bring resolution to all those small nicky nicky things that have stopped us and create fights at home create or just pushed under the carpet god just wants to bring resolution to all of that because uh, marriage is his idea. Marriage is his idea. He wants to bring resolution to every single home. And like we learned today, we walk in triumph. So why not triumph in that area too? So in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray triumph. We pray victory over every single home. That is a unit for our community. That is the strength. 
that is the weapon that we have to be as family to be as one unit in your name in Jesus name come lord jesus come lord you fight the battle for us lord the battle belongs to you and we know that the enemy tries but you have won the victory lord and we are triumphant in your name in jesus name i pray amen thank you thank you everyone those of you watching online our some of our pastors will be available right after service on the zoom prayer rooms so please connect there and they will be available to pray with you as well we're going to get ready to close are you happy you came here yes. amen and uh, just go home rejoicing walk in this in the strength of his word walk in victory let's close father we thank you for this time thank you for ministering to your people god and we pray that the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit continue with each of us always in jesus name amen amen thank you for listening we trust this message was a blessing to you for more free resources including sermons sermon notes publication please visit apcwo.org for information on apc bible college in bangalore please visit apcbiblecollege.org Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.